Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever studio vlog. I hope you all are doing well. So this is gonna be like a little um, shop update vlog. I'm preparing for my spring shop update and by the time you're watching this it should already be up. In today's video we're gonna be making some stickers, some bookmarks, um, clay pins. I'm really excited about that. I've never made them before. We're also gonna be making some memo pads, some little handmade memo pads and Stay tuned till kind of the middle or end and see what happens with those. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Grab a snack, grab a water or a drink. I have my water here and um, let's go ahead and get into it. Hello, hello. So I wanted to do a little voiceover here. So as you can see, I have a pretty big uh, drawing tablet by XP Pen and I have it on an Ergotron arm so I can pull it forward when I need to and push it back for a monitor if I need to as well. I definitely prefer working on a bigger screen rather than a smaller one. So we're going to jump right into a little sped up clip of me designing one of the memo pads here. This is for the Tulip Cat notepad. So there's some lines that I drew um, in Clip Studio Paint and just for you to write on little to-do lists or just uh, a list of whatever you need to get done or groceries or whatever. I really loved this design. Uh, a few of the products for this shop launch has um, kind of this tulip theme. I think it was perfect for spring. Um, and I love cats, especially a black cat. I do have a black cat named Noir. So it's kind of fitting to make a few that kind of look like him. So um, the notepad has the black cat on it. The bookmark has a black cat, a white cat, and a ginger cat. And you'll see kind of later on one of the clay pins that I make have a black cat design as well. So I definitely incorporated a few more cat designs into this launch and I think it all turned out pretty well. I'm really happy with it. So back to the memo pads. While they were really fun to do, actually I really enjoyed the process of making it. I think it kind of reminded me of when we had to um, bind our own books in college. So we had to use the glue and stuff and bind the paper. Um, it was more advanced obviously than this, but it kind of brought me back to that and it was a really nice experience to do again. But it wasn't until I was a few sheets in um, to printing off the memo pads um, that I realized I was using a ton of ink. And I don't really know how people um, print these at home because I've watched a lot of YouTube videos about others making them before I made this just to make sure uh, I was kind of doing it correctly or efficiently. And some of them had um, the EcoTank, like the Epson EcoTank printers. Some of them did not. So I don't know if the EcoTank is like super cost effective compared to what I was doing. But yeah, it just like drained my ink cartridges. I almost had to replace one and it was, I think it was about half full the black ink specifically. And by the time I finished this, um, yeah, it almost needed to be replaced. So definitely wasn't worth making more than the three that I made. Um, so I ended up just deciding to list these three as a little bundle together on the shop and hope that someone buys them to kind of get that money back on my end because it definitely, definitely was a little bit of a waste of ink in my opinion. <laughs> But like I said, it was still fun to do and maybe one day I'll be able to revisit this in a more cost effective way and do them myself because then I could make many designs, you know, a few of each because um, manufacturers that I've seen, they, you know, require a minimum of like 50 per design or even 24, which is still kind of a lot. I do use a pH neutral PVA uh, professional quality archival adhesive. <laughs> long little title there, but it's a really good glue for memo pads specifically because it's not too hard when it dries. So it's very flexible, which allows it to kind of bend and uh, just makes tearing off the pages really easy. And I did two coats of the glue and make sure they're thin coats, okay? You don't want to glop it on. So I think you'll see a small little short clip that I had to kind of wipe the glue off on a little rag that I use for watercolor or painting in general. And so I just made sure to wash the rag uh, pretty soon after so it didn't dry. And this glue dries 
pretty much in about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on like your community in your room. So this whole process really didn't take too long besides printing the sheets. Printing the sheets took quite a while and then cutting them took a little bit of time too, but not nearly as much. I decided to make cute little belly bands for these three memo pads, and they all kind of have designs that reference to the memo pad itself. And I just thought I added a nice little touch since these are handmade and it also helps keep the papers from kind of bending and stuff. So yeah, let me know if you've tried to make your own memo pads at home and how that went, what you liked and didn't like about it, um, and if you have any tips as well for anyone. Because as far as for me, I don't see myself uh, making them myself anytime soon. <laughs> so I'm going to let the rest of this little clip play and I'll check back in with you guys a little bit later. So for this shop update, I wanted to also do a little bit of a restock for these little cat prints that I made um, for my winter shop update. And so these cute little black cats doing cat things. And I think it's super cute and definitely was a little bit popular. So I just restocked it for the update as well as made a whole new print, this little forest print that you'll see in a minute. Uh, and actually making prints at home is one of my favorite things to do because it doesn't involve any laminating. Uh, like the bookmarks do and the stickers. So it's definitely, you know, pretty easy. Just print it out and cut it with a ruler and then 
Uh, oftentimes I'll finish it with my guillotine cutter. Uh, but this time I did just use the ruler completely and it was totally fine. If I have like several prints to do, I think the guillotine is a little bit faster, but I didn't want to break it out and mess with it, so I just used the ruler. <laughs> but yeah, let me know which print is your favorite, the cat print or the forest print. <laughs> So I was taking a little break and I don't know what reminded me, <laughs> but uh, I'm thankful that it did because I completely forgot that I forgot to water my plants for about a month now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. So my ZZ plant actually was pretty much fine. Uh, I didn't really notice anything wrong with him, but they do very well with being uh, watered less often. Um, I think I only watered it about every two weeks anyway, so a month wasn't really that bad. Um, but my other plants, uh, or plants specifically, the, I think it's called a pepero peperomia. Yeah, it definitely was looking a little worse for wear. Um, some of the leaves were definitely shriveling up and getting little wrinkles on them as it was using its water storage from its thicker leaves. So definitely had to water that guy. But since I'm doing a voiceover, I'm able to let you guys know it is doing much better. Um, it's been like a couple weeks now. No, week and a half uh, since I watered it pretty much. And it's doing much better. The leaves have really plumped back up. Uh, the wrinkles are all gone. It's just a little bit of yellowing on uh, some of the leaves. So I think I might end up trimming them off. But yeah, let this be your friendly reminder to water your plants. Really quick, the next few clips are going to be of me sketching in the sketchbook, and I'm going to be using my blue zebra pen. Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs>
voiceover Brittany again. So now we're at a really fun part in my opinion, which is actually making the clay pins. You don't really need many tools to get started. I'm lucky enough to have um, some in my kit from schooling over the years. I think these are actually, some of these are from high school. My uh, art teacher was a potter, so she, you know, did ceramics and stuff on the wheel and um, she actually let us do some pottery based, I think it was hand building actually. Um, but she had a kiln in the school that we were able to use, so we built some stuff and fired in the kiln. It was a really cool process. So that's where a lot of the wood ones are from, the wood tools that I have. But I did buy those uh, black, I think they're actually Sculpey brand tools uh, when I first got into sculpting uh, with Sculpey. Um, but really you could just use your fingers and kind of smooth the clay or mold the clay to how you need to, but a tool does help, I find. I found it easier to knead the clay in smaller pieces at a time. So I would take like a golf ball sized amount and knead it until it was warm enough and then keep adding to it and until I got one big lump of clay. And then, yeah, I was able to roll it out. So I tried to roll it out to about a quarter inch. Um, I read a lot online and they said definitely if it's less than a quarter inch, that's when it really starts to get weak. So I try to keep it around a quarter inch. It might be off by like a sixteenth or so here and there, but it's pretty consistent. And I think it just made for a really strong pin in the end. So I wouldn't recommend making them too thin. Try and keep them around that quarter inch mark. But yeah, since I knew I was going to be making um, a few of the same pins for my designs, I made like a couple each um, and I wanted to keep the clay amount like as the same as possible for all of them. So I actually made my own little uh, stencils, if you will. I just printed out my little sketch that I made on some cardstock so that way it was more durable and could last even after this process. Like I could make a whole new batch and still use the same uh, stencil. So it's definitely a little tip you can do is if you're making these and you know you're going to be making a few of them, go ahead and make a stencil. You can even draw it by hand. You don't have to print it out like I did. Um, I just find it was just easier to sketch it on the computer and then print it out. guys, I am so happy with how these notepads came out. This is the little 3x3 uh, three three inch memo pad. Little toucan. So cute. And then my favorite, this notepad here. Some little lines here for you to write on. Adorable little cat. This one is 3 inches wide by 6 high. I'm so happy with how they came out. I just wanted to kind of pop in and show you um, how they came out. I keep looking at them and to stop. So we're gonna go back to doing the clay pins and trying to finish those and I think all we have left to do is clean the dust off of them, bake them, paint them, uh, put the resin coat on top, and then that's it. So like I've only done like one percent of what needs to be done but it's cool it's okay. Uh, we're gonna go back to finishing those.
Hello again, it is uh, Monday, March 13th, and I'm actually super excited. We're gonna be finishing the clay pins today, I think, hopefully. And all I've left to do is the resin, and then, of course, making the backing cards and sticking the pins in the backing cards. Um, I think I'm gonna try to do one clay pin uh, with the resin coating first, and seeing if all goes well, if it works correctly. Um, if it does, then we'll go ahead and do the other 18 because I do have um, 19 clay pins. I have a UV lamp that I'm going to use and I think it's best to kind of leave them in the windowsill after as well to kind of let them fully finish curing and reduce that kind of uh, tacky surface coating. So I think we're going to go and leave them in the window over here that I have to clear off. We're going to clear off the window, set up the desk, and then uh, start coating them in resin. So hopefully all goes well and yeah, let's do it. Really quick you guys, make sure you wear the proper protective gear when you're working with UV resin. So that means gloves, that means eyewear, and most importantly a mask, a respirator rather. And make sure that it protects against organic vapors. Um, the one you saw me put on was just from Amazon and it's what I saw um, another artist that uses a lot of UV resin, Uncomfy Co. if you're familiar. I'm not even sure why you would not want to wear gloves when working with resin. It's It would be very annoying to have on your hands. The same thing with the glue. That's why I wore gloves with uh, when I was putting the pin backings on because I didn't want my fingers to be sticking together. So go ahead and put on some gloves, get yourself a mask, and some eyewear. Since we finished the clay pins and they're in the window, kind of, I don't know, doing the thing. I think they're good. It's more so just, um, I don't know, I've seen a lot of other people do it, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that and see if it removes any of the tackiness. It's really not that tacky. Um, but the next thing I want to do is go ahead and finish the backing cards and maybe print them today. Um, or print some stickers, I'm not sure. So, yeah, let's go ahead and see. When I was designing the backing cards for the clay pins, I wanted to keep it very simple and keep the same kind of color palette I used to actually paint the pins. So I used mainly a red, black, blue, and like an olive green. And minimal text, just making it clear that it is a handmade clay pin, and then my shop name, Salzone Studio, at the bottom. And definitely measure your clay pins to find out how big your backing cards need to be. And if you want it to be like a rectangle or a square, um, you could even do a circle if you have some sort of circle punch cutter. Um, but my pins were about two inches wide 
to two and a half at the longest. I think for some of the fish were like two and a half. So I went with a two by three um, card that I could use both vertical and horizontal depending on the pin design. So for example, the fish, I use the horizontal um, based cards and for the more vertical ones, I use like the llama or the mushrooms. But yeah, I really liked how the cards came out. I think it added a nice little touch for the packaging and I just think it looks really cute together once the pins are all attached. photos. I don't know what it is, but taking product photos really tends to drain my energy. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit all of them for the rest of the, pretty much the rest of the day. And then all that's left is, you know, uploading them, making the listings. probably gonna end the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it and if you saw any products that you're interested in definitely go check out my shop. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! <music>